For a series as big as Sonic, it's inevitable that there's going to be some lost media for the franchise. Well, a lot of lost media to be frank. This goes double for Sonic's creator, Sega. While known primarily these days for Sonic, Like a Dragon, and Persona, they've been around for over 60 years and have a storied history. A history of questionable business choices, to say the least but a history filled with ambition and vision, as well as some of the greatest games of all time. As a result, Sega has had tons of lost media to discover. So I decided to make this, the ultimate Sonic and Sega lost media iceberg. This goes over everything from cancelled games, failed pitches, hardware, non-gaming stuff, as much as I could find. And I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, this video is gonna get weird. A few things. This vid only goes over stuff that has some official involvement from Sega, so no fan games or hoaxes. Sorry Sonic 2 Special Edition fans. Also, if there's something I've talked about before in a previous video, I will go into more detail this time. So with that intro out of the way, it would be helpful if you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell as well for notifications on future videos. Please kick back, relax, grab a beverage, and enjoy the video. Sega Saturn Source Code the Sega Saturn is an awesome system and is home to many of the greatest games of all time. Panzer Dragoon Saga, Knights into Dream, Sakura Tyson, Radiant Silver Gun, Shining Force 3, Magical Knight Ray Earth, Burning Rangers, the list goes on and on. And it's a hot take, but I think the Saturn's library is better and more interesting than the Nintendo 64's. Despite the Saturn having so many awesome games, why haven't we seen too many ports of these titles? Somewhere along the way, Sega lost the source code for the Saturn and some of its games, meaning that Sega would have to recode or remake the games from scratch, such as Panzer Dragoon or House of the Dead. Some games have seen re-releases, usually based on another version like their arcade or PC port, such as Knights into Dreams. Not helping is the Saturn being very difficult to emulate and lots of games having low print runs. If you want to know why Saturn games cost a small fortune these days, that's why. Shame, as there are so many great Saturn titles that would find new fans if they were easier to access. Sega PlayStation Sony was looking to get into the gaming market around the 90s, and originally had a partnership with Nintendo to make a new console, the Super Nintendo CD. It was far enough along in development to have a few prototypes with only one surviving to this very day. The deal between Sony and Nintendo broke down due to Sony's agreements for the console, which Nintendo didn't like. After they split, Sony then went to Sega to start a partnership. Discussions between the two were going smoothly, however these talks were happening with Sega of America, which didn't have the best relationship with Sega of Japan at the time. Then President Hayao Nakamura thought that Sega didn't need to help Sony out. Sony was also losing interest in the idea, with the head of PlayStation Ken Kutaragi officially putting the Sega PlayStation down for good. So instead of Sony assisting Nintendo or Sega, they ended up quickly rising to prominence in the gaming community. Congratulations, you played yourselves. Sonic Extreme Possibly the most infamous cancelled game of all time, Sonic Extreme was a case of anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Sonic Team wanted to take a break from Sonic games and got the Sega Technical Institute STI, to make the next Sonic game for the next major Sega system, the Sega Saturn. Development was a mess. The dev team was using two engines to make the game, one for the stages and one for the boss battles. Getting the engines to function on the Sega Saturn didn't work, with the game hitting 3 or 4 frames per second on the console. Sega of Japan wasn't happy with how the game was progressing, but did like the boss battle engine. They ordered STI to use the boss engine going forward. The team realized their boss engine was similar to Nights into Dreams, and asked to use that engine to develop Extreme. Yuji Naka, however, possibly through miscommunication, thought that they were using the Knights engine without his permission. Naka-san didn't approve of STI's request and threatened to quit Sega then and there if they were to use it. During this time, Point of View was brought in to help out with the development, which didn't help at all. Then Sega thought that Extreme would be a good tie-in to a movie that we'll talk about later obviously throwing another wrench into a production that already had a million wrenches in it. Between internal politics, tensions between STI, Point of View, and Sega of Japan, the final nail in Extreme's coffin was lead programmer Chris Sen being told that he only had six months to live if he continued to work on the project. It's thought that the lack of a major Sonic game on the Sega Saturn was one of the reasons why the system didn't sell so well in North America, besides Bernie Stoller hating the system. Sega must have known something was up with Extreme, as they got Traveler's Tales to make a Sonic game and we got Sonic R, which was an okay game but not the killer app the Saturn needed. Extreme's legacy lives on, as several builds of the game have been found, and some gameplay ideas were used in Sonic Lost World, unintentionally at least. Also, Sonic Lost World is one of the best Sonic games. 
Sonic Jam and Christmas Nights did give us taste of what a 3D Sonic game on the Saturn would have been like, and Chris then would return to the franchise with Sonic Boom in 2014. Working on Extreme and Sonic Boom, that's like wrecking a car just to get a new car and wreck that one once you leave the parking lot. Sonic Runners one of the biggest wastes of potential. Runners was an endless 2D running game released for mobile devices in 2015. It was initially well received and had lots of characters to unlock and an amazing soundtrack. Sadly, due to poor decisions such as the game needing to be always online and poor microtransactions, the game failed to take off and was pulled offline in 2016. A person named Flux Sox, with the help of his team, managed to get a backup of the game running so we could keep on running in 2024 and beyond. Sonic Crackers, or Clackers, an early build of Knuckles Chaotix for the 32X, essentially. Sonic and Tails were tethered together and explored levels called attractions instead of acts. There were also isometric hub levels that weren't seen in Chaotix. The ROM has been dumped. Original movie Sonic Full Cut. Remember in May 2019 when this trailer dropped? Uh. Meow? Everybody hated it. Despite protests from Sega and the movie team, Paramount thought that this Sonic would be accepted like the designs for the Transformers or the 2014 Ninja Turtles movie. That movie sucked and their lips were mad chapped. When the first Sonic trailer released, God and the entire world were horrified at what Paramount created, and it was quickly announced that the movie would get delayed to February 2020 for a redesign. While the redesign did require crunch and an extra 5 million to make, it was worth it. When that first trailer released, only so many scenes were made, so a full cut of the movie with the original Sonic doesn't exist. Sonic Cafe If you lived in Japan and had a cell phone, you could have subscribed to the Sonic Cafe, which isn't an actual cafe, but an online service where you could play various Sonic and Sega themed games such as Nakayoshi Chao, Shadow Shoot, Sonic Billiards, and much more. Sadly, the service went offline in 2007, and not all games have been found. Sega should redesign some of these games and put them as side material in the next Sonic game. The Legend of Akira and Project Berkeley. The development of Shemu is a long one, starting as far back as 1993. Yu Suzuki wanted to make an RPG. The original concept was to be set in the 1950s in Liaoyang, China, where a boy named Tado was in search for the Master Ryu, not that one. The concept then shifted to be a virtual fighter RPG that would have told the story of the one and only Akira Yuki. Traces of a virtual fighter RPG can be felt in the final title of Shenmu, with Akira and Ryo looking like bros, Lan Di looking a lot like a young Lao, and the combat being a simplified version of virtual fighter. According to Sega Retro, Steven Spielberg got to see this part of development and was very excited to see the final product. After two years in development, Virtual Fighter RPG was retooled into an original project codenamed Project Berkeley. Footage or ROMs of VF RPG has not surfaced, but at least we got Virtual Quest take a shot if you played that title. Berkeley started development on the Sega Saturn, and it would have been an ambitious title for the system. Footage of Berkeley was included with Virtual Fighter 3 on the Dreamcast, and holy crap does this game look amazing. It's impressive a game like Shenmue could have been on the Sega Saturn at all. Due to the Saturn's poor sales in the West, thank you Bernie Stoller, Shenmue then moved to the Dreamcast and released in 1999. While it was the fourth best-selling game on the Dreamcast, far too much money was spent making the game and it ended up being a money sink for Sega, and is cited as one of the reasons why why Sega left the hardware market, besides these ones. <laughs> other than the footage of Shemu on the Saturn, no ROMs of it or the other parts of development have come to the surface. If the Saturn had Shemu and Sonic Extreme, as well as the other heavy hitters like Sakura Wars and Virtual Fighter, we'd be up to the Sega Saturn 6 by now. Sadly, we don't live in that reality. Itoi san, how do you know about the Three Blades? Years ago, I was Chinese. Shiba. When Virtual Fighter 1 was in development, one character that was left on the cutting room floor was Shiba, a fighter hailing from the Middle East. He was heavily inspired by the pro wrestler Sabu. What's weird about Shiba is that he was cut very late into development, late enough to be on the arcade machine for VF1. He was replaced by Akira in the final product. That said, Shiba did become a playable character in Fighters Mega Mix. It's just weird how late Shiba was cut into production. I can't think of another character in any other fighting game that made it onto the arcade machine itself and not be playable. Also of note, Akira's first design looked like Kenshiro wearing only martial arts pants, and there was another character who was very muscular and had shades. Some of Virtual Fighter's staff would split from Sega to Namco and create Tekken, and more than likely they salvaged those early designs as Kazuya and Jack respectively. 
Jet Set Radio Dinosaur Games. The first of many X pitched Y to Z kind of lost media in this video. Sony approached developer Dinosaur Games to make a Jet Set game, presumably for the PlayStation 3. They made a prototype and pitched it to Sega, who promptly rejected it. The art and concept video are still online. Puzzlau Kids. Bringing Puyo Puyo stateside in its original form was quite the journey. Sega was going to localize the first title as Puzzlau Kids. If you buy Puyo Puyo 1 on the Game Gear and use it on a PAL or US system, you get an English version called Puzzlau Kids. The naming conventions of this version died here, as Puyo would venture outside of Japan in different forms, and Sega just kept Puyo Puyo as Puyo Puyo Worldwide, with the exception of Satan being renamed to Dark Prince. Related, the first arcade game's localization remained a mystery for years, with people being unsure if it ever existed. With M to Sega Ages port for Switch came Puyo Puyo 1, with a translation that many thought never existed. I bought this copy for a whopping 2 bucks, and it's worth it at that price. Propeller Arena Pop Punk Dogfights and the Sega Dreamcast, what an amazing combo. Arena was going to be released on September 19th, 2001, but a certain major historical event happened in September of that year and it would have been insensitive to have an airplane flying game released during that time frame. Because of that and the Dreamcast ending production early, Propeller Arena was cancelled. The full game has been dumped and you can get it running on your Dreamcast. Propeller Arena was never lost media, just something that got cancelled, but I might as well cover my bases. Hyenas a modern case of lost media. This game was being made by Creative Assembly as a first-person hero shooting game. Despite a decent marketing push from Sega, poor management and an engine change, and a saturated market doomed hyenas to obscurity, and cost Creative Assembly a pretty penny. Did you play any of the betas? Sega Swirl 2, the sequel to a game that next to none of you have played. Swirl 2 was released for the GameTap in 2006, then GameTap shut down in 2010. Clear footage of the game is up on YouTube, so we do know at least one person has the ROM but isn't sharing. At the very least, some of the music of the game can be listened to. Hatsune Miku Project Diva 2008 Demo In August 2008, a demo of the PSP game, Project Diva, leaked online. Sega went nuclear and took down any traces of the demo. Sega has had a bad run with demos, haven't they? This demo had five songs that had different charts than the final product and much choppier animation. The game was playable at that year's Tokyo Game Show, but it is said to be different from the leaked online demo. All searches to find that earlier leaked demo haven't been fruitful, so it remains lost media. Sega VR a well-publicized add-on for the Genesis was the Sega VR, a virtual reality headset. Well, this is Sega, so it's probably called Virtua Reality. Sega of America was flush with cash thanks to the success of the Genesis, so they had an idea for a VR headset. It went under extensive testing and made a few public appearances. Despite some hype, the VR was cancelled because of health concerns, as it was so immersive that players would have bumped into things while playing. Really, it was just too expensive to make and Sega was already flooding the market with the Sega CD and 32X, and the tech just wasn't wasn't there for VR in the early to mid 90s. Iron Hammer, Matrix Runners, Nuclear Rush, Outlaw Racing, maybe Virtual Racing were planned, as well as a tech demo scene within Sega. Thanks to the Video Game History Foundation, Nuclear Rush can be played on VR devices with an emulator. Iron Hammer's prototype is in a collection but hasn't been dumped. The other games haven't been found. Sega Neptune. A 2 one 32 x in Genesis, essentially. It got as far as prototyping, and a few are out there, and it would have been released around winter 1996. But by the time this would have been released, the Sega Saturn was already out, and saturating your market is a good idea. The 32X had potential, and really, it should have been a new console altogether. Sonic 4 Episode 3. The Sonic 4 titles were episodic download games meant to throw back to the Genesis titles. I've played both, and I don't think either are particularly good. A third game was planned, but the meh reception to Episode 2 put those plans to bed. If you play Sonic Media or Superstars after slamming three buzz balls, you can pretend that you're playing Sonic 4 Part 3. Sonic 06 Early Build I remember seeing a trailer for a new Sonic game way back in 2005 and thinking this was going to be it. This is going to be the greatest game of all time. The latest Sonic game came out for the PS3 and 360 in 2006. I played it and it sucked horse semen through a crazy straw. It turns out that the finished product was based off of an earlier build of 06 that wasn't as polished. The final product was going to have an active day-night cycle, a faster silver, more gems to use, more action, and just being more better. But 06's development was a mess. Yuji Naka left early on, making Shun Nakamura take up directing. Sega split the dev team into two, as they wanted the game for the PlayStation 3, 360, and Wii, but the Wii wasn't strong enough for 06. Sega wanted the title out for Sonic's anniversary, adding the side effect of a lack of bug testing. 
The end result is one of the most disappointing games ever, with a potential good build being hidden in some archive. I still maintain that if Sonic 06 had a smoother development cycle, or at least another 6 months in the oven, it could have been a great game. I still want 06 to get an official remake just to show that it could have been something amazing. The fan game Project 06 is an effort to remake Sonic 06 into the game that it should have been. And by the way, those early trailers from 2005 are lost media as far as I know. Sonic Mania 2 Mania was like that first hookup after a toxic relationship, a breath of fresh air that cleared the mind. Mania was a commercial and critical success, and a beacon of hope in another dark age of Sonic. So naturally, a sequel would come out, right? Well, those talks were happening between Sonic Team and Christian Whitehead. However, both parties wanted to go in separate directions, and left well enough alone. The split was amicable, so maybe the two will collaborate on a new game in the future. Sega and Arzest would make Sonic Superstars, which had Naoto Oshima on it. While not as good as Mania, it's still a solid title in the Sonic library that was released at a poor time. It kept the spirits of the Genesis games, but isn't just nostalgia bait. Christian Whitehead would make an original title, Penny's Big Breakaway. It's not out yet at time of making this vid, but I'm sure it will be fine. Sonic Saturday AM Season 3 This was considered to be the best Sonic cartoon for a time, Sonic Prime is the best, and Season 2 ended on a cliffhanger. A third season was planned, going as far as storyboarding. Then old ABC Thanos snapped its fingers and cancelled the series. Despite high ratings, Disney bought ABC and cleaned house, and Sonic Saturday AM was exiled onto the USA Network. There have been attempts to finish the series, but none of them have gone off the ground, and with the Ken Penders lawsuit, Sonic Saturday AM will never see a true ending. At least it lives on with that guy who made a life-size Sally Acorn sex doll with bones carved from wood. Imagine the smell of that thing. Adventures of Sonic Pilots To get a cartoon off the ground, you gotta make a pilot. The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog is no different. I used to watch it as a kid, and that show was insane. The pilot went unseen outside of those in the industry for years, outside of a brief cameo in the show proper. The pilot being seen inside the show, what a concept. In 2009, a seven-minute version of the pilot went up online, without the music or sound effects, and is more than likely a rough cut of the pilot. There's barely any dialogue, and the animation is noticeably smoother than the final show. The show was already a fever dream, and watching a pilot without music or sound effects makes me feel like I huffed a whole bottle of glue. According to the Lost Media Wiki, the pilot was included in the Blu-ray set of the series. Sonic Boom 2013 In the beautiful city of St. Louis, a Sonic convention was held by Sega to showcase new info, get some merch, hang out with Sonic fans, and see Crush 40 perform live. It was streamed on Live Alliance, a site I never heard of until now. This was 2013, Twitch and YouTube streaming weren't the standards for streaming yet. Some clips have been archived and put into official recaps, and there was a mirrored stream from fan SSF1001 on Livestream.com. Sega must have it archived, but after a move and a large turnover in staff, it's doubtful that the full stream for Boom 2013 will ever be seen in full. Sonic Movie Early Trailer the development of the Sonic movie is a long one and definitely worthy of its own video, but I'll hit the major points here. Ignoring earlier attempts, the Sonic movie that released has been in the oven since at least 2013. Sony was going to fund it, with Neil H. Moritz as producer and Chris Miller and Pat Casey as writers. However, between the Sony hack and Tom Hoffman icing the project, it went into limbo. Paramount then picked up the movie and it finally got off the ground. There's very early movie material showing Paul Rudd as Tom Wachowski before James Marsden was cast. Before the first trailer in May 2019, there was an earlier trailer shown at CinemaCon 2019. While that trailer was mostly the same as the May trailer, Sonic's design was a little bit different and there was EVERYBODY DANCE NOW in the trailer. There is a picture of it and it is terrifying. This is what Lot's wife saw before she got turned into a pillar of salt. Due to the backlash of the original Sonic trailer, it hasn't been seen since. There was also a teaser of the movie seen at a Brazilian convention in 2018, and that has been leaked as far as I know. Sonic Adventure DLC if you were cool, you could have gotten some DLC for Sonic Adventure back in the day that included Christmas, Halloween, and New Year's DLC. Since the Dreamcast servers are down, it's impossible to download the DLC these days. Over the years, fans have backed up the DLC online. In particular, the New Year's DLC was nearly lost to time, but a fan bought a VMU that happened to have the DLC saved and backed up for all to enjoy. Two lovers did play Sonic Adventure on a holy night. That's how I spent my Christmas last year. No, that's a lie. I spent my Christmas drinking too much, watching Iron Man 3, then I threw up in my bathtub. You happy? Persona Cross Detective Naoto Volume 3 
a spin-off manga featuring everyone's favorite detective, Naoto. I didn't go for her in my playthrough of Persona 4, Rise was my woman of choice. It was published underneath the Dengenki Comic Next format as a Tonkobon, basically a graphic novel format that you see in any bookstore. For some reason, chapters 13 through 19 were missing. They were to get published underneath Denki Mao in a magazine instead of their own books. Fan Fifth Their Fifth uploaded a video bringing attention to the lost chapters, and eventually all were found and uploaded online. Yakuza 2 and 3 English Dubs The first Yakuza game on the PlayStation 2 had a stacked cast for the dub, including Mark Hamill as Majima and Michael Madsen as Shimano. Despite all the talent in the voice cast, they clearly cheated out on the voice director. The choice. Go! Kill this arrogant motherfucker! Despite this, Sega was interested in giving a dub to Yakuza 2. However, money and the so-so sales of Yakuza 1 in the States stopped those plans. Shame, as Madsen did say he enjoyed playing Shimano. A dub was once again considered for Yakuza 3, but the localization for that title had to be done fast. So if you wondered why 3 had cut content, that was why. Budgetary issues also reared their head again. It wouldn't be until 2018's Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise would RGG games get English dubs again. Weirdly enough, the hostess Yuki would get an English voice for her small appearance as DLC in Yakuza Like a Dragon, provided by Erika Lindbeck. I wonder if Sega considered adding in dubs for Yakuza 6 and Kiwami 2 as DLC, or they knew they were going to bring back Yuki at some point in the future, which they did. This is only here because there isn't a lot of Yakuza Lost media out there and I wanted an excuse to talk about the series. Golden Axe Revival Sega Studios Australia, the team behind the Castle of Illusion remake, were making a Golden Axe game. But crunch hours, health issues, and the executives not knowing to do with the game led to it being cancelled, and eventually Sega Studios Australia shut down. A prototype was cleaned up and put up for free on Steam as Golden Axe for Sega's 60th anniversary. While it was cool to play, it was a sore spot for those who did make the project, as they weren't asked about it beforehand. Though, more than likely someone at Sega probably found the prototype in an archive and didn't know the story behind it. It's cool to see a prototype come to the surface, but it sucks that the Australian team had to go through some nonsense to make it. Shenmue 1 and 2 Remake Before the release of the third game, Sega was considering giving the original titles an HD remake. As influential as those games are, the Shenmue titles have not aged well in some respects. The remakes were cancelled in favor of the HD ports to PS4, Xbox, and PC. My guess is Sega thought it was too expensive to remake both Shemu titles, given that the Shemu series were never particularly high sellers. If you're a younger gamer who didn't grow up with the Shemu hype, do you think the original titles hold up today? Chakan the Forever Man! If Chakan had a theme song for an early 90s cartoon, it would have totally sounded like that. A Dreamcast sequel was in the pipeline at one point, but for one reason or another, it never released. Some concept art and animation of Chakan is still up. It's said that some work on the sequel went into Blood Omen 2, as both titles were directed by Steve Ross, but more than likely that's just Ross's style influencing both projects. Streets of Rage 4 Before we got an actual fourth game, Streets of Rage 4 could have happened twice in the 90s. One attempt was being made for the Sega Saturn, but ended up being made as a totally separate game for the PlayStation 1 and 64 called Fighting Force, which I never played. A second attempt was being made within Sega and does have some videos floating around, but a combination of tensions between Sega of Japan and Sega of America, and then heads of Sega of America not knowing what Streets of Rage was, ergo, no one else would know what it is and cancel the project. Yeah, that makes sense! At least 4 did get made eventually, and it was damn good. And there's a 3D game being made too. Die Hard 32X Okay, this barely counts for this video, but Sega published the Saturn game in Japan. And to clear the air, this wouldn't have been a port of Sega's Die Hard Arcade. This is based on the other game, Die Hard Trilogy, which did release for the Saturn and PlayStation. 32X and Genesis ports of Trilogy might have been in the oven. The only record of Trilogy existing is from a magazine called Mean Machine Sega. If these ports were being made, they were likely cancelled early on because of the failure of the 32X and the Genesis nearing the end of its life. Die Hard's legacy lives on, as a lawyer-friendly version of John McClane, named Bruno Dillinger, appeared in the first Project Cross Zone. I prefer the Bruno Dillinger escape plan. Aliens Crucible an Aliens RPG to be made by Obsidian for the PlayStation 3, 360, and PC. A bit of footage is online, and it looks kind of cool. Obsidian had a hard time trying to make an RPG in the Aliens universe, and Sega pulled the plug on it in favor of Aliens vs. Predator. Shining Force Mobile Before Golden Sun and a bunch of whack-ass Mario sports games, Camelot made the Shining Force series underneath Sega. Camelot split from Sega during the Saturn era due to Sega's poor management. Anyway, at one point a Shining Force mobile game was being planned that looked like the original Genesis games, not the horny stuff that came later. I know what you saw. 
The mobile game was being made by Korean company Vespa, but financial issues put the game down. Shining Force fans will never feel happiness again. Sega Pluto A redesigned Sega Saturn that would have been cheaper had an eternal hard drive and had the Netlink built in. It was hidden for years until a former Sega employee spilled the beans on it. It wasn't released because the Saturn was a lost cause outside of Japan because of you know who. At least two units have been found and are in private collections. Saturn 64X In the 90s, if you wanted to help boost sales of your console, you made an add-on. It worked for the Famicom Disk System and PC Engine in Japan, but failed for everybody else. The 64X would have beefed up the Saturn's power to be somewhere in between the Model 2 and 3. Some games were planned for it, mostly Virtual Fighter 3 and Sega Bass Fishing. Because of costs and the thing being a bad idea in the first place, Sega just focused on the Dreamcast instead. Virtual Fighter 3 Saturn AM2 and Yu Suzuki were tired of hearing how powerful the PlayStation was compared to the Saturn. Suzuki could have shut those people up with Virtual Fighter 3, a Model 3 game running on the Saturn. By the time VF3 was ready for the Saturn, Sega was gearing up for the Dreamcast and had Genki make the Dreamcast port of that title. From what I've read, the cancellation of the Saturn port of Virtual Fighter 3 was a sore spot for Suzuki. In an interview I found, he didn't want to answer any questions about VF3 on the Saturn. Getting info on the game at all is hard. It might be issues with NDAs, or maybe it was just a bad experience to work on. The Saturn was a lost cause in the States and Europe, so I think Sega made the right choice there. Still, I want to try VF3 on the Saturn just to see what it would have been like. Sonic 1 CD a port of the first Sonic game was planned for the beloved Sega CD. I'm not sure what features it would have had besides CD quality music. Hey, Lost Media Hunters, find those tunes! The game was quietly cancelled in favor of Sonic CD. Some footage of this port is online. Sonic DS When the DS was announced, this game was shown off at E3 as a tech demo. You move your finger and Sonic goes fast. That person's wife must be very satisfied. Sonic DS was a tech demo, and it's unknown if this was ever going to be a full game. We got the Rush games on the DS instead, and no ROMs of this early game have been found. I do wonder if this game inspires Sonic Dash on mobile devices. Sonic Frontiers Early Build The road to Frontiers was a long one, a road I made a video about. The original plan for Frontiers was to have one large open world, but that wasn't working out, so Sonic Team scrapped that build in favor of the open zone format seen in the final game. Since they changed directions in Frontiers, there's a good shot that that one open world build is lost forever. There was a video floating around Twitter showing that build of Frontiers, Persona 3 Reload, and the Jet Set Radio reboot. A lot of people said that video was fake, but lo and behold, everything in that video got revealed. Currently, this is the earliest known footage of Frontiers, made before the game was formally announced at the Game Awards 2021. After changing direction, the Sonic Team went for the quote open zone format seen in the final game. Unfortunately, time constraints caused the back end of Frontiers to be rushed. The original plan was to have Kronos, Rhea, and Uranus Islands combined into one. A fan has made a demonstration of what the islands would have been like if put together as planned. At least Sonic Team got to make some free DLC for Frontiers with the Final Horizon, where the difficulty was like running up a 90 degree angle. I'm the coolest, so I managed to clear the Final Horizon DLC. Then Sonic Team patched the game to make it easier. After I cleared it, thanks for nothing, jerks! Sonic Lost World DLC Sonic Lost World is an awesome game and one of my favorites in the Sonic series. And Nintendo made it even better thanks to allowing Sega to make DLC featuring Yoshi and Zelda for the game. Sega took great care in paying tribute to both series and Lost World. In fact, the Zelda DLC feels like a prototype for Frontiers nearly a decade before that game even existed. With the closure of the eShop in 2023, the DLC is no longer available. I haven't looked into it too much, but I have a feeling the DLC isn't hard to find, but we'll leave it at that. Mario & Sonic Sochi 2014 3DS the Mario and Sonic Olympic games have always come out for the handhelds and consoles, but curiously the 2014 version skipped the 3DS. There are some eyewitness reports of a 3DS build, and Polygon had screenshots from the alleged 3DS version on their site until they pulled the screens. Neither Nintendo or Sega have said anything about a 3DS version. The rumor was Nintendo wasn't happy with the Wii U version of Sochi 2014, and efforts went towards making Rio 2016 run better on the Wii U and 3DS. Then again, Ryu 2016 on the Wii U is a very hard game to find on the Wii U, so if you have it, congratulations. Sonic Winter Olympics iOS No Mario here, as this was the mobile version of the Olympic Games. There were only four events and the game was only up for so long. A person named MTB Cooler found the IPA file and made it downloadable. Sonic 16 When Unseen64 first hit the internet, I was obsessed with the site. 
and this was one of the first games I saw in it. This was being made by the Sega Technical Institute. It would have been a slower paced and story heavy Sonic game, and it would have tied into the cartoons. The video you are watching now is a pitch to get the game made, but Yuji Naka denied the pitch, thinking that the gameplay wasn't Sonic. Then that gets flipped on its head when you remember that Sonic Labyrinth was a thing and that game sucked so hard it was like drinking goat diarrhea. According to Chris Sen, 16 was an early concept for Extreme. Sonic Edusoft. In my original Sonic Iceberg video, I thought that this was talking about the various Sonic educational games. I was half right, as an educational game was planned for the Master System by a third party, Tiertex, but as it turned out, they didn't have the Sonic license. A ROM has been dumped. Sonic Synergy. An early build for Sonic Boom, basically. Synergy was Big Red Button's attempt to revitalize the Sonic series and launch a new media line, because obviously a Sonic reboot was needed in the early 2010s. The concept art looked strange, like something from an 80s cartoon. Because of that, Sonic Team rejected this pitch in favor of something closer to Sonic's original design. There is a title screen of Synergy, so there's potentially a build in some archive. Synergy was planned for the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One before the Sega and Nintendo deal went through, and refitting the game for the Wii U is one of the biggest reasons why Sonic Boom ended up being terrible. Also of note, there was a group of people called the Ancients in the Synergy phase of Sonic Boom. I wonder if that's where Sonic Team got the idea for Frontiers. Sega Sonic Bros. An arcade puzzle game starring three different colors of Sonic. You match the colors and build lines or circles. If this title has a Bubble Bobble vibe to it, that's because Fukio Mitsuji designed this title. It was tested in Japanese arcades but wasn't well received, and Sega quietly pulled it from listings. For decades, info of this game was elusive. Then, arcade collector Showtime got aboard and dumped the ROM. Showtime kept it private, but somehow the ROM leaked in 2018, so you can play it on MAME if you're so inclined. Sonic 1 Amiga Sonic was planned to have a port on the Amiga, with a magazine making an advertisement for it. However, Sega cancelled the port realizing that Sonic would give people a reason to buy the Genesis. Based on the screens, it had a different art style and different levels than the Genesis version. According to the Lost Media Wiki, a ROM was playable but isn't up anymore. There's also rumors of the screens being fabricated, but I don't know, it looks real to me. It's still real to me, dammit! <laughs> Sonic Chronicles 2 as much as I like JRPGs and Sonic, I've never played Sonic Chronicles. I had a poster for the game from Nintendo Power, and it was baller. Anyway, Chronicles ended with a tease of a sequel, but over a decade later, nothing. Bioware, or Bro Ward as Google Docs autocorrected, made Chronicles, but around this time EA bought Bioware, so them working on a sequel was out of the question. Just to add another bullet to the body, Ken Penders filed a lawsuit against Sega and Bioware because they took concepts from the comics to use in the game. While Penders won the lawsuit against Archie, the case against Bioware and Sega ended in a stalemate, and Penders cannot file again unless Sega uses the characters from Chronicles again, which they definitely won't. Between all of that, the game did not sell well. What a combination against a harmless DS game. For what it's worth, Did you know Gaming did an interview with someone who worked on Chronicles to see what would have happened in a sequel. X-Woman The X-Men games on the Genesis were pretty darn good, and a third game would have tied the series together. X-Woman would have focused on Rouge, Storm, and Jean Grey. In the footage available, everybody could have flown around the stage. It was announced in 1996 and didn't get far into production, as by that point the Saturn was out. One of the employees who worked on X-Woman, John Pettigo, said that he had a ROM, but the board degraded, so getting a ROM of this game is out of the question. Jet Set Radio Cartoon In 2020, a JSR cartoon was getting pitched around. Artist Shakira Presley gave some details, including a rough script, some art, and said that she wanted Lil Nas X and John Boyega as voice actors. Sega was interested, but no animation company wanted to produce it. With shows like Sonic Prime, Castlevania, Arcane, and Cyberpunk Edge Runners doing well, I think they should take another crack at a JSR animation. Or maybe do another Sega game like Golden Axe or Streets of Rage. That could make for a good cartoon. Lost Judgment TV Drama and Movie In early 2022, Kotaku ran a story about a Lost Judgment drama and movie being made, with Takuya Kimura reprising his role as Takayuki Yagami. The origin of the link comes from the Japanese publication Nikon Gendai. As of the making of this video, the show has yet to surface, so what happened? After Lost Judgment was released, discussions between Sega and Johnny and & Associates, Kimura's agency, broke down due to them not wanting a PC release of either Judgment title. That said, PC ports did eventually release. Years of abuse and scandals finally caught up to Johnny & Associates, forever tarnishing their name, so it's safe to assume that any Lost Judgment TV show is going to be stuck in the vault for now. 
Rest in trash, Johnny Kitagawa, you piece of filth. In the words of Frank Reynolds, flush that turd down the drain! I get claimed whenever I use Always Sunny Clips. Sakura Revolution. I made a video about this back in 2022, so I'll be brief. Sega went a bit too hard with the Sakura Wars reboot, and they tried to make a gacha title for the game. There were no ties to the classic games or the then new Shin Sakura Wars. The gameplay wasn't anything to write home about, and their waifus in the game weren't even good. If I have a hard time finding hentai of them on Pigsiv, you've messed up big time. Revolution didn't even last a year on the market, and Sega lost a whopping $30 million on the game. When I made that video, I was kind of down that Sega might have killed the Sakura Wars series a second time. But at time of making this video, there might be hope on the horizon. Allegedly new games for Sakura Wars, Panzer Dragoon, and Evangelion are in the oven. I really hope they bring back Anastasia. I miss her and her glorious bosom. Sakura Wars Online If you ever wanted to play some Sakura Tyson-themed board games with your friends online, this was the game to get. Online was released in 2001, and it was like an early version of Games as a Service. For a series as big as Sakura Wars, you would think an online game would have been a good idea to launch in the first year of a system, not months after the system stopped being made. The game can be played offline, but whatever online exclusives are long gone when the servers closed in 2005. Michael Jackson Scramble Training When you think we couldn't get any more 90s, we pulled a stunt like this. Jackson had one of those arcade games where you sat down and watched a video while the attraction moved. For the longest time, the only footage of this game was shaky camcorder footage from the 90s. This was before 4K was invented. A tape went up for auction, and a collector bought the tape. After some time and money, the tape was digitized, and now we can enjoy the slice of 90s goodness. R.I.P. Michael Jackson, sorry you have to deal with old Joe Jackson in the afterlife. Trigun PS2 If you've ever watched a VGBC stream when I'm commentating Smash or Street Fighter, you might have noticed that I always sign off with love and peace. That's because Trigun is awesome. Trigun the Planet Gunsmoke was announced in March 2002 and was being developed by Red Entertainment. Despite some interest, news went quiet. Later on, another gun game, Gungrave, released on the PS2. It's speculated that Sega lost the Trigun license and used the assets from Planet Gunsmoke to make Gungrave, but that's unverified. As a Trigun fan, I really want to play Planet Gunsmoke. Second Tag Tournament DC Port I made a short about this, and I might as well put it up here because YouTube doesn't like to show people my shorts. Sega wanted Tekken Tag Tournament on the Dreamcast and offered Akira Yuki to be a guest character in it. Namco considered it, but they put Tekken Tag Tournament on the PS2, where it was an early killer app for the system. At least we got Tekken DLC for Virtual Fighter V, so... eh? Agartha. A curious survival horror game for the Dreamcast that was being developed by European studio No Cliché. It was announced early in the system's life, but never released due to the premature death of the system. Another factor was Sega stopping development in Europe, making No Cliché's employees redundant. Several pieces of concept art have been uploaded online, and in 2018 an E3 demo was found. Shadow the Hedgehog Unrated when online folks talk about edgy media, Shadow the Hedgehog always gets brought up. It's certainly edgy, but it's a kid-friendly game, given the E10 Plus rating. Sonic Team wanted the game to be teen-rated, as it would have had more blood, more swearing, and the uncensored version of Maria's death. When the game was being made, the E10 Plus rating was made, so Sega opted for that rating. There were rumors that the Japanese version is uncircumcised, but it's the same version as we got in the States. Also, someone said that there's audio of Shadow smoking a cigar, but I, for the life of me, cannot find that audio if it actually exists. Sonic 3 Limited Edition. Basically, Sonic 3 and Knuckles on one cartridge instead of having to make a tower. Some prototypes leaked, and the main differences are some extended musical tracks. Not much else to add here. Sonic Wonders of the World. Sega was always eyeing up Sonic for the big screen. It could have happened as early as 1995 as Sonic Wonders of the World, written by Richard Jeffries. It would have involved Sonic coming out of the game world through a science experiment and Sonic and some white boy having to team up to stop Robotnik, who also came out of the game, and that game being Sonic Extreme. So yeah, this was going to be a tie-in game to a game that already had the cards stacked against it. MGM was to produce Wonders of the World, but lost interest in the project due to Sonic's falling relevancy in the later 90s. Jeffries did try to get the movie made underneath DreamWorks, but licensing fees made them lose interest. Most of the film treatment has been found, but it didn't get much further than that. Sonic Armageddon Another movie pitch from the late Ben Hurst, who worked on Sonic Saturday AM. He was working with Ken Penders on a movie that would have wrapped up the story from that show. Penders then went to Sega and claimed that Hearst was trying to co-op the series, and killed Hearst's plans. Penders then, as you normally would, 
pitched his own movie called Sonic Armageddon in 2002 to Sega, it would have been a much darker take for the series, with the planet exploding and roboticization being a much more painful experience than depicted. And you thought Shadow the Hedgehog was edgy. Supposedly, Penders wanted DreamWorks to make the movie, but he's gone back and forth on that. There was some interest from Sega, but they just focused on Sonic X instead. Despite the pitch being made in 2002, Armageddon officially died in 2007, with nothing to show for it besides the concept art and pitch video. With the Ken Penders lawsuit, there's zero chance of Armageddon ever getting made, and that's a good thing. Sonic Ride, another one of those motion simulation games that were popular in the arcades. The video for the ride was used in the music video, They Call Me Sonic, which I would totally play for you, but those jerks claim you if you use the audio in your vids now. The ride had never came out, but you can at least watch the music video and jam out to the music. Sonic Tokyo Toy Show Build the holy grail of Sonic Lost Media. The first proper showing of Sonic was at the Tokyo Toy Show in 1990, and it was in playable form. It looked noticeably different than the final game. Yuji Naka wanted to include this build in Sonic Mega Collection, but couldn't find the ROM. Another Sonic build was shown up at the Winter Consumer Electronics Expo in January 1991, but again, that build is seemingly lost to time other than a bit of off-screen footage. If there was a Lost Media genie out there, a genie that's voiced by Bob Odenkirk because that would be really cool, I would have three wishes. My first wish would be all of my personal Lost Media, you know, like my early videos, videos and images from high school, middle school, stuff like that. I would ask for Saki Sonobashi just to forever put that to bed. And number three would be the obvious pick of the Scott Stapp and Kid Rock love tape. Don't tell me you wouldn't watch that with arms wide open. Sister Sonic. Falcom had a game called Puffle Mail released for the PC-88 and to introduce it worldwide, they were going to remake the title for the Sega CD as Sister Sonic, starring a quote, sexy relative of Sonic. Sexier than Rouge? Not sure about that one, Chief. Fan backlash caused Sega Falcom to keep mail as well, mail worldwide. So Sister Sonic was a legit game, but as of the making of this video, no concept art has been seen of Sister Sonic. Fan artists, you know what to do next. Sonic Day or Sonic Demo, a pitch for a mobile game made by UK developer Nitrum. It's a jumper game, kind of like they released Sonic Jump. For a pitch, the game looks amazing. I love the art on the characters. It looks like an updated version of their Genesis sprites. Sega rejected Nitrum's pitch, sadly. That said, Nitrum did release an original title called Super Leap Day, which seems to share a lot of DNA with Sonic Day. Sonic X Chaos Emerald Chaos Ah yes, the Game Boy video. Some younger viewers might have a hard time grasping that there was a time where you could not just download movies or TV shows onto your smart device. You either had to beg your parents for a portable DVD player, get one of those specialized devices like a Hit Now, or get your shows on the Game Boy Advance. The video quality was terrible and you had to watch your video on a tiny Game Boy screen. They were so afraid of people pirating videos that the Game Boy video could not be used on the Game Boy Player on GameCube. Sonic X with the cheesy 4 kids dub was going to get another release on the Game Boy video line that contained episodes 3 and 4 from season 1 of X. It must have been cancelled at the last minute as the box art is up. I don't think anyone is going to go out of their way to find this one unless they really want to watch the 4 kids dub of Sonic X in the worst quality possible. Super Sonic or Sonic 2 CD Another cancelled port of a Sonic game for the Sega CD, though one with a lot more mystery to it. It was brought up in a Brazilian gaming magazine, already a great start, then brought up again in English magazines. This alleged port would have had more stages, bonus rounds, CD quality music, and voice acting. I hope Jillial White was planned to voice Sonic in this game. Since this was the early 90s, there's a good chance that it was just made up to pad out the magazine. Sonic CD came from Sonic 1's cancelled Sega CD port, so I don't think making another game on top of CD and 2 proper would have been possible at the time. Sonic Mars 32X The road to Sonic Extreme was a long one, and on that road were some games that never came to pass. One title was Sonic Mars. STI was making it as a launch game for the 32X. To make a long story short, STI was unsure about the 32X's power and if their vision for a 3D Sonic game would have even been possible on the system. When they did get something to work, the pitch to Sonic Team didn't go over so well. Internal changes at STI crippled production even further. Between all of that, a lack of direction, and the 32X being hard to develop for led to Mars being cancelled. Sega of America then got STI to make another game for the Sega Saturn, and we all know how that went. Untitled STI Game Another early attempt at STI making a Sonic title. This one was an isometric title for the Genesis. Only one screenshot was made as a mock-up. It should be noted that this game was made before 3D Blast. 
Though, in an update to Sonic Retro, this was a part of Mars, not a separate title, so I got mixed up in real life. But I'm gonna leave this as a separate entry out of spite. Sonic Sports 32X Sonic, Tails, and Rift Star in a long-awaited sports game. Looks like we'll have to wait a bit longer. Sonic Sports was mentioned in an issue of Game Players Magazine, and that's it. My only thought is that this was something that was thrown around as a potential Sonic game for the 32X, but everybody knew by that point the 32X was a bad idea. Or more than likely, the magazine just made it up. Silver LCD Game Leave a comment if you had one of those McDonald's and Sega LCD games. I had the Sonic one, which was pretty fun. There was a contest at the time, and if you got a silver-colored LCD game, you could have gotten some prizes. Only 25 of the silver games were made, so finding one that survived all that time was very difficult. L Super Sonic Q did get in touch with someone that has the game, so we know it was real and at least one unit is safe. Sonic Extreme not to be confused with the Saturn game, this extreme was a pitch by Visionscape for the Xbox where Sonic and Shadow are skating around on hoverboards like Marty McFly. Supposedly, due to the contract, Sega and Sonic Team could use whatever concepts that were pitched to them and not include the original developers. It's speculated that Riders was inspired by this pitch, but that is unconfirmed. A ROM was found on an Xbox dev kit. Sonic Boom Missing Episode a video shows some sketches of a scene featuring Sticks the Badger that doesn't seem to be from any episode. Some think these scenes are from an episode that didn't air. Executive producer Bill Freyberger said that those storyboards were from an episode called Meet Sticks. Though, there is a chance that they are from a deleted or altered scene from another episode. Still, Sonic Boom doesn't have any missing episodes. That we know of. Feed it a chili dog! Everyone loves chili dogs! I don't think he can eat solid food! Well, then put it in the blender! Well, if you say so. <laughs> the chili dog, not the baby! <laughs> oh, okay, that makes more sense. Shenmue Online. An MMORPG set in the Shenmue universe. Announced in 2004, it was more or less based on the events of Shenmue 2. Development was slow, and by 2007, news went quiet. Despite Yu Suzuki saying the game would be finished, surprise, surprise, it never did. With Shimu 3 releasing and being a massive letdown, we're not going to see online come back anytime soon. And also, let's be real, Shenmu 4, it ain't gonna happen. Dreamcast Swatch DVD player and VMU MP3 player. Being on the market for so long, the Dreamcast had lots of ideas that didn't materialize. A DVD player was planned to be competitive with the PlayStation 2. Sega didn't think that DVDs would take off and didn't include a reader with the Dreamcast which is said to be one of the reasons why the Dreamcast failed on the market. By the time a DVD player could have been made for the Dreamcast, it was too late to salvage the system. One of the best parts of the Dreamcast was the VMU, and a version would have been released that would have been an MP3 player as well as a memory card. Imagine listening to Limp Bizkit or System of a Down on that thing. It would have been early 2000s as heck. Finally, Sega and Swatch were making an add-on called the Swatch Access that used cards so you could pay for things like movie or train tickets online via your Dreamcast. Wow, using cards with the chips to pay for things. Haven't thought of that one. It was fun reading about the Swatch Access, as these days you can touch your card or watch anywhere to pay for things. Sega, always ahead of the curve. Maybe too ahead in this case. Edge 16. Online play for the Genesis being made by AT&T and PF Magic where you could play online. The game that Edge 16 would have been compatible with were Balls 3D, Brutal Paws of Fury, and the Shadow of Yasiburius, I don't know how to say that, and I don't care. They really picked the cream of the crop, didn't they? AT&T got cold feet about entering the game industry and pulled the Edge 16 system out before it could get to market in the fall of 1994. The Sega Channel ended up being the way to play Genesis games online. The Edge 16 wasn't being made by Sega, so I didn't have to put it in this video, but eh, might as well. I guess, the first mission. A Persona 3 prequel starring our favorite robot, I guess. It was released for phones in Japan in 2007 and never left the country, a typical Atlas behavior. I wasn't able to track down the original file, so I'm not sure if it can be played these days unless you happen to find an old Japanese cell phone with the game still downloaded. However, a full playthrough is up on YouTube and Nico Nico with English subtitles, and there's a complete write-up on the Megami Tensei wiki. So you can't play it, but you can at least know what happens in the game. It's a long shot, but I would love it if Atlas included the story from the first mission in some sort of DLC for Persona 3 Reload. But this is Atlas. They make amazing games, but insane business decisions. Sakura Wars World Project Sales for the Sakura Wars series were in freefall after Sakura Wars 4, and those in charge had an idea to revitalize the series. 
as well as expand the series into new genres underneath a new banner, the Sakura Wars World Project. Of the projects announced, 5, Episode 0, and a remake of the first game released. The cancelled titles are Imperial City, a visual novel-style game, a prequel game called Koma which would have been an action and adventure game, and a game based on the Edo or Sengoku period called Sakura Hime Nishiki Emaki. Thanks to the underwhelming sales of So Long My Love, these games got canned. Then Sega rebooted the series with the excellent Shin Sakura Wars in 2019, but might have killed the series again with Sakura Revolution. Sakura Wars died so the 2023 Sega revival could exist, and I hope we get a new game. Crazy Taxi 4 In the portfolio of a former Sega Studios Australia employee, they had a curious piece of concept art of a Crazy Taxi 4. It looks like customers could have jumped from taxi to taxi. That could have made for a fun spin on the Crazy Taxi gameplay. Knowing the behind-the-scenes drama with the Australian team's failed Golden Axe game, I imagine Crazy Taxi 4 didn't get much further than this piece of art. O-Parts not to be confused with the song from The World Ends With You. This was an arcade game being developed by success with two lovely ladies in the game. The most notable thing about this title was that the Japanese gaming magazine Gamus thought that the title looked like farts. Looking at that logo, I could totally see that error. Maybe that's why they cancelled O-Parts. Or maybe the author of the article wanted the girls to fart in him, who's to say? A prototype of the ROM is online, and the arcade game would have been nothing but breakouts. Joy. Where's the farting stripper fairy girls? Cancel Dreamcast ports. Virtual Fighter 4, Super Monkey Ball, Shinobi, Spike Out, Daytona 2, Toe Jam and Earl 3, and Scud Race were planned for the system but were canned with the early death of the platform. The ROM of Toe Jam and Earl 3 for the Dreamcast has been found. How far the other games got off the ground is a mystery, but hey, at least they all released elsewhere so we can enjoy them. Virtual Hamster. Between this and Choo Choo Rocket, someone at Sega really liked the idea of being a rodent. Virtual Hamster is where you play as a hamster going through tubes with a jetpack. It was being made for the 32X, then moved to the Sega Saturn where it was cancelled. I'm not sure if a hamster game would have been the killer app the Saturn needed in the States. Heavyweight Champ What's the first fighting game? You might think it's ER Kung Fu or Karate Champ, but it was actually Heavyweight Champ, released in 1976. A primitive game, that's for sure, but nonetheless important. The arcade machine had boxing gloves for joysticks. Heavyweight Champ was remade in 1987 and totally buried the 76 game. A cabinet went up for auction at one point, but the pictures of the machine look heavily damaged, so it's a long shot to find a ROM of this game. Baby Boom, a game possibly being developed by STI to be published by Sega. This is a game where you take care of a bunch of babies instead of getting white girl wasted on New Year's 1999. Shinzo Abe, you would have loved this game. The ROM has been found so you can enjoy Baby Boom if you desire. I think this game was cancelled because that building looks like a chode. Sammy Cross Capcom Okay, this barely counts, but it was announced after Sammy bought Sega so I can kind of justify it. In 2003, Sammy and Capcom were going to collide in a fighting game that more than likely would have been Guilty Gear and Rumblefish characters battling against Street Fighter and the Darkstalkers. There was a logo and nothing. When this was announced, Capcom lost interest in fighters, so this project never got too far off the ground. Plus, Sammy just bought Sega at that point, so they might have been pretty busy too. The closest thing we got was the Arxis developed Sengoku Pasara X, a game that was so broken its competitive scene died in one day. 32 Extreme and Jet Ski Rage Two touted games for the legendary 32X. 32 Extreme would have been a sports game of the extreme variety. You could have played rolling hockey, ultimate frisbee, watercraft football, and a paintball snowboarding game. Sounds totally tubular, dude! Jet Ski Rage would have been a jet ski game. I think, it's hard to tell. Both games were canned because the 32X was too pure for this world. Sega Retro says that 32 Extreme might have evolved into Jet Ski Rage or the other way around. Hard to tell with these old and cancelled games. Air Knights. A sequel to Knights was planned for the Dreamcast, and it would have had motion controls to play it on. It was cancelled for unknown reasons. That said, the tilt controls did get salvaged as the maracas for Samba de Amigo. We did get a sequel for Knights with Knights Journey of Dreams on the Wii. I bought that game for $1 in 2016, and it is worth that price. And it's certainly better than Balan Wonderland. I hope you are having fun in jail, Naka-san. I also read that Journey of Dreams is being planned for the 360 and PS3, but Sega forced the dev team to make it for the Wii instead. If there is an HD build of Journey of Dreams, I would like to see it. Tetris, the Grand Master 4. 
You might think you're hot shit playing Tetris 99 online, but the Grand Master will make you feel like cold diarrhea in a Dixie cup. A fourth game in the Grand Master series has been in the oven since 2005. Some location test footage from 2009 is up. In 2015, Arika tested the game in the run one that is in the Puente Hills Mall in California. The game hasn't officially been cancelled, but I can't imagine a Tetris game taking over a decade to make. Arika Vice President Ichido Mihara complained that other games were taking his ideas and was angry that people outside of Japan had to play the Grand Master series via emulation. People outside of Japan might have had a bit of an issue outside of their hands, Mihara-san. Sega was going to publish the Grandmaster 4, but didn't so it wouldn't compete with their own Tetris giant. I've also heard that the Tetris company and Sega had disagreements with each other and with Erika. Plus, Ubisoft had the exclusive license for Tetris games for a period of time and that was also an issue. Something did shake loose, as two of the Grandmaster games were released on home platforms via Hamster's arcade archive line. And while I'm here, the Grandmaster 2 was going to be released for the PlayStation 2, but Erika couldn't find a publisher. Video footage of the PS2 build is online, courtesy of Mihara-san himself. Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 Remakes Sometime in 2015, remakes of both adventure games were in the oven, being cooked by Sega Shanghai. Sonic Team was busy with various projects, and Sega thought their Chinese branch would be able to handle the projects, as well as break more into the Chinese market. Originally, one was only going to be remade, but Sega gave Shanghai the green light to remake two as well. The games were put on the ground for a variety of reasons, mostly stemming from the failure of Sonic Boom, the rise of Lyric on the Wii U. Sonic Team got cold feet about other developers handling Sonic, ignoring the fact that a lot of Rise of Lyric's issues came from Sonic Team, but I digress. There were also money issues, and Sega was worrying about the series' future. According to YouTuber Speed Super Sonic, the remakes were also of poor quality. Had remakes of both Adventure Tales released after Sonic Boom and were bad remakes, bad remakes of two masterpieces at that, I don't think the Sonic series would have been able to recover from too many big blows like that. Thankfully, that didn't happen and Sonic seems to be doing fine in the 2020s. The only thing that has been linked to the remix was the Sonic Adventure music experience, which had new arrangements of various Sonic Adventure tunes. Sonic Saturn Another Sonic game being developed by STI, known as Sonic Saturn these days. A few developers from STI started a new studio called STI Burbank. This team was tasked with making a game to compete with Mario 64, a daunting task I am sure. This was going to be entirely 3D and be more realistic, whatever that means. There are some mock-ups and concept art, but it didn't get much further into production because Yuji Naka didn't like the game. The most known thing about this build is the minigame Sonic Pool, which would have been how you got the Chaos Emeralds, by playing pool. The guy who designed it, Peter Morayek, I have no idea how to say your name, man, wanted the pool game in Sonic Extreme's Project Condor phase, but Extreme didn't can stop that from happening. He tried to get the special stage in the Saturn version of 3D Blast, but time constraints meant that it wasn't feasible. Sonic 3D Blast Cassette I hate 3D Blast. Whack game, but amazing music. Jun Sinoe demoed the music tracks for the game on a cassette. In a pleasant turn of fate, John Burton, founder of Traveler's Tales, uploaded the music online in October 2019, with the final track being found in February 2020. That was a very surreal month. Sonic Live in Sydney Fucking oath, mate! In Sydney, Australia, there was Sega Amusement Park, which sounds like the happiest place on Earth. There was a Sonic Live show, which was originally done with people in costumes before going to a puppet show. A CD of the music and audio of the show is online, but no video footage of the show exists. Sega World Sydney shut down in 1999, so it's unlikely a video of either performance will be found. Sonic Riders GBA Despite being a huge Sonic fan, I have never played any of the Riders games. I might have checked out the GBA port. Have you ever played Sega Rally on the GBA? It's a surprisingly good port. Sonic Team wanted more 3D graphics in the GBA port of Riders, to which Sega of America said that they couldn't make it on such short notice. So the GBA port was canned with some sprite data to confirm its legitimacy. Wait, this was called Sonic Extreme? There's three cancelled Sonic Extremes? How does that happen? Sega Sonic 32X Sega Sonic is notable for how much it has avoided a legit port. The arcade game used a trackball for movement and improved difficult to emulate. That's why it hasn't been included on any Sonic collection so far. It might have had a shot on the 32X. Two magazines back in the day said that the game was getting a port to the 32X, but that's as far as the trail goes. No ROM data or anything has suggested that Sega Sonic was in development for the 32X or Saturn. Even if it was, Sega Sonic would have needed lots of alterations to get it to run on the thing. Will we ever see an official port of Sega Sonic? Sonic OVA Soundtrack 
The Sonic OVA was a pilot, essentially, for a Sonic anime. The sales of the OVA weren't high enough to justify a Sonic anime at the time, so that wouldn't qualify as lost media, just something that never got made at all. The real lost media comes from the OVA soundtrack, which slaps, but because of poor sales, the CD got canned. The soundtrack remained elusive, but then in 2021, it was found. You might know everything I'm going to do, but that's not going to help you since I know everything you're going to do! Strange, isn't it? Yeah! Archie Sonic, Endangered Species and Sonic Universe. It's everyone's favorite comic artist, Ken Penders again. There are at least two arcs that had to be changed because of Penders. One arc was entitled Endangered Species, where Sonic and Knuckles would have to stop the remaining echidnas from being killed off. When the arc was about to get started, the lawsuit was taking form. Archie didn't think Penders had a chance against them, but Archie flinched. In a hasty move, Archie then forced newcomer Ian Flynn to make numerous changes to the comic. That leaves Endangered Species as an abandoned story with only a few panels to its name. As for Universe, there was a story involving the Chaotix that had to get rewritten due to the original storyline using Penders' characters. The original cover and one panel is still up of Universe. Sonic Underground Epilogue Sonic comic lost media that does not deal with Uncle Penders. Archie decided to give the worst Sonic cartoon, Sonic Underground, of all things, a comic. It was announced at New York Comic Con 2012 for Universe's 50th issue, and nothing. Ian Flynn more or less said that the Underground characters were off-limits, seeing as it was made by a totally different production company for a totally different medium. Flynn has been mum on what would have went down in the comic. No script was written, but there are lots of notes. A fan comic was made based off of Flynn's notes, and that's as close as we'll get to the epilogue. Sonic Adventure Burger King promo. First off, Burger King is whack. Trash-ass nuggets and fries. Second, in 1999, there was a promo for Sonic Adventure with some toys. Now, the toys didn't get made, but the art book did get made and it was bought from eBay. The user who bought it uploaded some pics of the book to show what could have been. At least we got those awesome LCD games from McDee's, which is just a better fast food joint. Shenmue The Animation Season 2 Something about the Shemu series is cursed. The Shemu anime aired on Toonami. I didn't watch it, but I'm sure it was fine. It did well enough in viewership to warrant a second season, and work started on it. However, the merger between Warner and Discovery caused a lot of shows to be written off for tax purposes, and that included Shenmu. Imagine if Shenmu Season 2 did well. I could only imagine other games could have gotten adaptations. Alas, the Shenmu Lost the Media curse strikes again. Vector Man PS2 at E3 2003, Sega and Pseudo Interactive announced a reboot of Vectorman for the PS2, which was a third-person shooter. It was shown off in a very early stage of development and then cancelled in 2004 for unknown reasons. In 2023, a ROM of the E3 build was found so we can see what we missed out on. Skies of Arcadia Legends PS2 and PC ports and Skies of Arcadia 2. The greatest RPG of all time, Skies of Arcadia, had a lot of potential. The Legends port that hit GameCube was to release on the PS2 and PC, but didn't happen for unknown reasons, more than likely because of the poor sales of the Dreamcast original. A sequel has been talked about, but at this point it's safe to say it's never gonna happen. And to be frank, as much as I love the original, I think just porting the game to modern platforms would be better than a sequel. When you make a sequel to a cult classic title, you run a good chance of losing touch of what made the original so good in the first place, and make a game that just isn't as good. I would not want the Skies of Arcadia 2 to be like Deadly Premonition 2 or Shinmu 3, yuck. Super Monkey Ball 3 the Monkey Ball games were popular on the GameCube, in fact, I still have my childhood copies of 1 and 2 at my parents' house in Albuquerque. A third game was planned for the GameCube, but didn't get far off the ground. Former series producer, Toshihiro Nagoshi, was asked about a third game multiple times, but dodged the question. The only thing that confirmed 3 existed was a trademark called Banana Crazy. It might have evolved into Deluxe on the Xbox and PS2, or even Banana Blitz on the Wii. Super Monkey Ball Wallpapers for a promotion for Super Monkey Ball 2, aka Humanity's Masterpiece, there were promotional wallpapers uploaded throughout 2002 and 2003. Only eight have been found. I mean... they look nice? I'm all for the righteous hunts of lost media, but I feel like there's more pressing stuff to archive. Plus, is that how you pick up girls at the bar, saying that you search for lost wallpapers from 2002? Super Monkey Ball Mini. Okay, here's something a bit more interesting. Online games. In 2001, a Flash game for Monkey Ball was made that was a good taste for what the real deal plays like. For a 2001 Flash game, it's very impressive. In May 2017, most of the game bar level 10 was found by Lost Media Wiki user Pico. Then in March 2020, another user named Jesus, not that one, found the rest of the game. 
so it's there if you are interested. Or you could just play Super Monkey Ball proper on the GameCube and know what peak truly is. Headstrong Jet Grind Radio, a classic case of X pitched Y to Z lost media, which really isn't even lost media, just stuff that never got made, so there's nothing to lose, unless they made something that is actually playable. Anyway, Headstrong pitched a JSR game for the Wii, but ended up making House of the Dead Overkill instead. The concept art is still up. I think a JSR game for the Wii would have sold better than House of the Dead in hindsight. Headstrong, I'll suck you off! Headstrong, I'll suck off anyone! Doctor Who Genesis the British ripoff of Bill and Ted, it might have had a game for the Genesis, being made by Sega themselves. Er, this is British, so excuse me, Mega Drive. When this game was announced, Doctor Who was on hiatus, so maybe they got the license for cheap? Whatever the case, development must not have gone too far off the ground. In my limited Doctor Who knowledge is that he doesn't really fight aliens as so much as trick them. There might be a good game in there somewhere, but we'll never know. Doctor Who peaked when Matt Smith joined Morbius. I watched that movie on an airplane, and that's the best context to see that movie in. Real Life Career Collection, a compilation of Emergency Call Ambulance, Jumbo Safari, and Brave Firefighters for the Dreamcast. It was supposed to release in early 2001, but never got far off the ground according to Wikipedia. Jumbo Safari did see ports to the Wii and DS. The other two titles have yet to see a re-release. Crazy Taxi Movie Of all the Sega games to make a movie for, you chose Crazy Taxi. Richard Donner was signed on to direct the film. Writing a script for a crazy taxi movie ended up being difficult for the obvious reason that there's no plot in the games themselves. The rights expired then went to Mindfire Entertainment in 2002, and they also couldn't get a movie made. Just watch Drive while blasting Offspring in the background, and you can pretend that's a crazy taxi movie. The Lost World Jurassic Park Special Jurassic Park is an awesome movie and made for some decent games. As promotion for the third movie, there was an update to their arcade game, The Lost World Jurassic Park, that had bigger screens, better sound, guns with recoil, and air bursts. It's like a 4D movie! It was made for the Model 3. The ROM has not been found, and neither Special nor the original arcade game reported to any home systems. Are there any cabinets still working? Garfield The Lost Levels when the Sega channel was active, a few games had DLC, one title being Garfield Caught in the Act of All Things. At least three levels were downloadable, but when you disconnected from the service, you lost the data. Finding footage of these levels is near impossible, given the time. Two of the levels were included in the Game Gear version, and there was another level in the PC version. An updated re-release of Garfield was planned for the 32X, and that might have had the lost levels on the cartridge. But surprise surprise, the 32X bombed. So no known complete edition of the 16-bit version of Garfield exists. Here's an idea, for the new movie, they should make a complete version of Garfield with Chris Pratt involved. Eternal Champions, the final chapter. Well, this was a depressing rabbit hole to go down. Eternal Champions was a decent seller on the Genesis and had an updated game for the Sega CD and two terrible spin-offs. There was a third game called The Final Chapter in pre-production on the Saturn, but it got cancelled by Sega of Japan. Series creator Michael Latham said that there was a demo made for the Saturn that has yet to service. Latham also said that there were proposals for comics and an animated series, but were cock-blocked by Sega of Japan. Sega wanted Virtua Fighter to be their flagship fighter, and screwed over whatever plans Sega of America had for Eternal Champions. So what could have been a rival to Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter remains as two cult classic fighters. Latham said that he does want to make a third game, but I guess that ball is in Sega's court. Cancelled bad handheld titles Even when they were making consoles, Sega made games for other handheld systems. I don't know what so plans the Tiger executives took Sega to to get games like Virtual Fighter and Panzer Dragoon on the R-Zone of all things. Sonic R was planned for the R-Zone, while Sonic 3D Blast was planned for the GameCom. The Lord had mercy on us by killing both of those platforms. Even the N-Gage had Sega games planned for it, Alien Front and Virtual Cop, but more specifically. Finally, the Gizmondo, the system that had ties to the Swedish Mafia and literally melts like diarrhea in the hot sun, had a Sega arcade pack planned. All these games were cancelled because the platforms suck so hard that they should be considered war crimes. David Robinson, Supreme Court No, this isn't a lost predecessor to Phoenix Wright. This was a basketball game for the Game Gear. For one reason or another, the Game Gear version of this title was cancelled despite the Genesis version releasing. Whatever the case, two development cards were found and backed up online. So if you're itching for a basketball game on an 8-bit colored handheld, it's out there to enjoy. Deno Senki Netmark Another attempt at virtual reality, this time being made on the Model 1. It's a shooting game where you shoot stuff. I can't find any hard numbers, but it looks like it cost a lot of money to make. Only so many units were made, and to this day only two boards are in private collections that I know of. 
Arcade Collector Showtime did manage to dump the ROM, but the VR stuff causes issues with MAME. There is footage of the game online, and it is comforting to know that the game is preserved. X-Men The Mind Games 32 X-Men getting naked at Ram Ranch, Woo! A more ambitious X-Men game, it was a 3D action game to take advantage of the almighty 32X. Sadly, poor sales of the thing put this X-Men game down. In 2009, a prototype was dumped and can be played via emulation. It said that the game was salvaged as another Marvel game, Hulk Pantheon Saga, a game where the Hulk needs keys to open doors. That game was terrible, it gave Bruce Banner cancer instead of superpowers. Fantasy Star 5 a magazine posted a screenshot of an upcoming JRPG, thinking it was Fantasy Star 5. Upon further examination, it was shown to be a different game called Sorcerer's Kingdom. Fantasy Star 4 Remake The first two Fantasy Star games got remakes in Japan. They were to get localized in a collection that would have included a remake of 4. Sega instead made Sega Ages Fantasy Star 4, basically a straight port of the fourth title to the PS2. Then it sold poorly, leading to the remakes never getting localized and 4 never getting an official remake. In the end, no one won. Shadow of Atlantis Sega's vision of the Sega CD was a tad misguided, given how much they leaned into FMV and point-and-click games. Shadow of Atlantis was Sega's take on Jewel Verne's 10,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Delays pushed it from the Sega CD to the CD32X to the Saturn where Sega just pulled the plug on the project. If you want Jules Verne on Sega, just find a copy of Nadia for the Genesis. Hammer Away When Raiden hit the scene, that caused a wave of Raiden ripoffs. One potential candidate was called Hammer Away. It looked like an early version of Battle Garaga. It looked like an early version of Battle Garaga. It didn't do so well in testing, so it fell into obscurity. A ROM is out there if you are curious. MC Hammer vs. Evil D Sega had a hit with Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, so why not have Lightning Strike twice with an MC Hammer game? Plan for the Sega CD, you played as MC Hammer and shoot stuff. It looks bad. I can't find a reason why it was cancelled, but I guess these so-so sales of the Sega CD and MC Hammer's fallen stardom hammered the nail in the coffin for this game. Oh come on, I tried. Tails Sky Patrol Disney Build Tails Sky Patrol is a weird game, even by Sonic standards, and it also isn't a particularly good game at that. When it was in development, it was going to be a Disney game and made for a system that was going to be a cheaper alternative to the Game Boy that was also meant for educational purposes. That system never released, and info on it is scarce. The dev team then repurposed the game for the Game Gear. Early in development, it was going to be a Disney game, and in some very early footage you can see Pete. Being trapped on the Game Gear, no wonder Pete turned to darkness. What the property was going to be is unknown, maybe a Mickey flying game or a Tailspin game. Reading up about Sky Patrol was a lot more fun than recording footage for this game, I'll tell you that. Treasure Tales I keep wanting to call this game Tales Treasure Tracker. Another Tales game, this time being developed by STI. It was going to be a slower, puzzle-based game for the Genesis. The game never made it past mock-ups, and the team went to make Sonic Spinball. The images came from former STI employee Craig Stitt, who uploaded his video resume from 1995. Sonic Forces VR Sonic Forces was intended to have VR support, and a VR mode was shown behind closed doors at E3 2017. While moving fast was okay, if a bit too much, when Sonic jumped that was the issue. Since Sonic spins when he jumps, it caused the camera to spin around too. The person who tried the VR mode said that they threw up after playing. I knew some people hated Forces, but not to the point where it made them throw up. Well, there was this one time I played Yakuza 0 and decided to mix Monster Energy Drink with Okinawa Snake Sake and it mixed too much together and I threw up in my toilets. Anyway, because of the poor reception of Forces VR, it's been kept under wraps. Super Sonic Sisters A pitch made by Deke for a Sonic spin-off cartoon. It was going to star Sonic's cousins, the twin sisters Monica and Isabel. Two pitches were made, but Deke never gave the green light. Having three Sonic cartoons on air around the same time might have been too much Sonic, especially if one barely had anything to do with the games. This was unknown for the longest time until former Deke employee Phil Harnage posted about the pitch online for preservation's sake. Segapede Formerly known as Astropede, this was a spin-off made by STI where you control a badnik named Zip who befriended Sonic and they teamed up to save Robotnik from a lab accident. And yes, that is Hidden Palace Zone as the level. Sonic Team did like the game, but thought it could be its own title, not related to Sonic at all. Development on Sega Pede went on for about 14 months. The reason why the game got canned was that STI was juggling too many projects. 
and Sega of America got them to focus on projects that were further along in production. Craig Stitt, who made the pitch, shared the ROM with Hidden Palace and the story behind this obscure game. This was on the original Sonic Iceberg, but all this info was shared in 2022. Always great to see an obscure game get some love. Sonic Joy Palace Attractions Sega has had their own theme park called Joy Palace in Tokyo. Despite living in Tokyo for five years now, I still haven't been. There's various attractions based on their games. For example, there was a shooting game called Sonic Ghost Shooting where you rode in a car and shoot at ghosts. There was also a quiz game called Sonic Brain Ranking, which I totally would have owned at. Since the attractions are no longer up, they only exist in whatever photos I could find and the memories of those who went there. Viral Chow these were Chao intended to be given away at events for Sonic Chronicles, kind of like Pokemon. Due to low sales of Chronicles, the events were cancelled. Four of the five Chao can be found in the Japanese version of Chronicles with a cheat device, but one remains unfound. Climax Studios Sonic Pitches British company Climax Studios had two pitches for Sonic titles. One was Sonic and the Shadow World for the Sony PSP. Sonic and Shadow are trapped in another world, another world that's dark and edgy. They then would need to work together to escape the world, lest they get stuck there forever. Sonic Rivals was in the oven for the PSP around that time, so there's a good chance that Shadow World wasn't greenlit as Sega doesn't like the idea of the PSP getting two different Sonic titles. They apparently had another title called Sonic Origins pitched, and very little is known about it. I guess Climax wanted to tell Sonic's origins, despite Sonic Team mandating that Sonic not have one outside of being from Christmas Island. Doesn't help that Sega released an actual Sonic Origins in 2022, making searching for more info difficult. Though, upon researching this topic again, I'm not sure if Climax made a pitch for Sonic Origins. An early name for Sonic Boom was Sonic Origins, so maybe that's where I'm getting confused at. But it doesn't matter as an official Origins exists. Sonic Anniversary Generations for the PSP, essentially. Game Preservation Group Obscure Gamers found an early build of Anniversary, and not much was there. Anniversary didn't get much farther than a logo and some textures. For whatever reason, this game was cancelled in favor of the PS3 and 360 ports, as well as the 3DS version of Generations. The game was pretty good. Generations was planned for the Wii and DS2, but were cancelled. Game Gear 2 while sales of the Game Boy crushed the Game Gear, the Game Gear did sell well for itself, enough to have a successor plan. The Game Gear 2 would have had a touchscreen. Costs and internal factors are why the Game Gear 2 didn't get off the ground. Well, that's very nice. Will that be all, sir? <laughs> Master System Floppy Disk Japan loves their floppy disks. Even when I started working in Japan in 2016, there were a few places that used floppies. The Master System version would have allowed for bigger games, but the peripheral went unreleased. Probably due to bad sales of the system in Japan and America. A floppy disk add-on was also planned for the Genesis, but it skipped the system and we got one for the Sega Saturn. Cancelled Merch the mandatory cancelled merch bit where I play the same damn Pat Mac video. Every series you know has some merch for it that gets stuck in limbo for one reason or another. Sega, and the Sonic series in particular, has lots of cancelled toys and plushies that never made it to shelves. Be it poor timing, logical issues, lack of interest, or Sega just saying no. If you know where to look, you might be able to score some test merch for yourself. Vector Man 3 and Neo Someone at Sega had a lot of confidence that Vector Man would be a big franchise like Sonic. A third game was being developed by Blue Sky Software for the Genesis, Game Gear, and Saturn. According to Sega Retro, there was also a shot of this title being made for the Nintendo 64. By the time Vector Man 2 released, Blue Sky's contract with Sega was terminated and Sega wasn't in the place financially to finance a new game. Members of Blue Sky then formed V-Sky and did get in contact to make a Vector Man game for the Dreamcast, and it had a playable demo called the Vector Man Neo. Neo was rejected as Sega thought that Vector Man didn't have the recognition to warrant a new title. Stories International Movies a leaked document showed that Stories International, a Japanese film company, were planning to produce movies with Sega for Shinobi, Golden Axe, and Altered Beast. To the shock of millions, none of them got off the ground. With the success of the Sonic movie in 2020, Comic Zone, Streets of Rage, and Space Channel 5 were greenlit to become movies. Will they be good? Will they even come out? Only Tim will tell. B-Bomb. A weird Genesis game where you play as two creatures and attack things with your butts. Yeah, it might have been a fun game, but it was never released. Some art and assets were reused in different STI games. Space Channel 5 News Show I don't hear many people talking about the Space Channel 5 games these days. 
but I still see its protagonist, Ulala, pop up here and there. She almost had a new show for MTV. To the surprise of nobody but the producers, doing an animated news show isn't exactly practical. When news breaks, you gotta be ready to go. Can't be fumbling around with early 2000s CGI when the world is falling apart. Could you imagine Ulala of all people talking about the horrible news that's going on in the world? Would that make it easier to digest, or just be a terrible reminder of the hellscape we live in? Sakura Wars website material During the heyday of the Sakura Wars franchise in Japan, the websites had stuff like flash games, announcements, videos, all relating to the series. The sites went through various redesigns, and when they were redesigned that media wasn't backed up. The sites can be viewed via the Wayback Machine, but as you can see lots of stuff from the site wasn't saved. It's hard to find anything from the sites. Even digging through Google and Nico Nico didn't get me anywhere. How much material was on these sites is unknown, and if anyone had the foreskin to save things from the era. This also got me thinking, what else was on the Sega website back in the day? I remember browsing the Sega site for Sonic Adventure 2 child stuff back on my family computer. Given that computer has long since met its demise, I'm no help in recovering old Sega website material. Echo 2 Sentinels of the Universe The Echo games are messed up. The Dreamcast game, Defender of the Future, was going to get a sequel, but the cancellation of the Dreamcast put Echo down, perhaps for the better. A playable ROM has been dumped online. Puyo Korogashi, a Puyo Puyo racing game. It was talked about in a magazine, and based on the art, you probably rode the beans. It was being made for the 32X, then the Saturn, and then quickly cancelled, and never got further than concept art. Some other Puyo pitches included a fighting game and a battle royale game like Tetris 99. A Puyo anime was also pitched by Tolkuma Shoten, but Compile wanted to do an anime in-house, which they did with a few shorts in the mid-90s. Seaman 3DS In 2012, the late Satoru Iwata asked Yute Saito if he could make Seaman on the 3DS, thinking that it would be a good way to showcase the system's capabilities. Because clearly having a man fish voiced by Leonard Nimoy would be a system seller, it didn't get far into production. And really, Nintendo, of all the Dreamcast greats you could have had on the 3DS like Fantasy Star Online, Sakura Wars, Crazy Taxi, Skies of Arcadia, Sonic Adventure, you went with Seaman. Pretty soon, people won't even need to leave their homes in order to conduct their daily business. You humans are going to get lazier and less mobile, and forget how to deal with each other face to face. I think things could get pretty ugly a few decades down the road. Do you think the internet is dangerous? Shenmu Machi also known as Guy or Town. This was a mobile game that retold the events of the first title where you played as a Yokosuka resident who followed Ryo. Yu Suzuki was inspired by Mafia Wars to make this game. It was online from late 2010 to 2011, and that's it. Finding any gameplay or info of this game is difficult. Since it was online for about a year, finding the files would be a tall order. D-listed mobile games. Sega has embraced the mobile market with both hands to mix results. With every Chain Chronicle, Puyo Puyo Quest, or Fist of the North Star Legends revive, there is always a Sakura Revolution, Virtual Fighter Combo Champ, or ReZero, starting life in another world, lost in memories. WHO NAMED THAT?! So here's every Sega-related delisted mobile game that I could find. How much of these games were saved is unknown, and if there's anyone who cares to find the files to save them is another story. And if you spent money on them, I will laugh at you. Looney Tunes by a Hair A racing game starring our favorite Looney Tunes characters. It was shown off at the Amusement Machines show in 1993 in Japan and vanished, with only a handful of picks to prove it existed. It's speculated that Sega axed the game as soon as the expo ended, and more than likely it would not have done well in Japanese game centers. Sonic 2007 Cartoon There's usually a 5 or 6 year gap between Sonic animations. That said, there was a long gap between Sonic X and Sonic Boom. Was there a show planned between those two? And as it turns out, yes! Grant Morin revealed that a new cartoon was in the works in 2007, but didn't manifest. I'm assuming not much was made for it. Not helping was that time frame being kind of awkward for Sonic. Sonic Awakening On the resume of former Silver voice actor Pete Capella, he had a game called Sonic Awakening on it. Was it DLC for Sonic 06? A sequel title? Something related to the cancelled 2007 cartoon? We may never know. Sonic the Intergalactic Criminal 
An idea that Josh Miller and Pat Casey had for the Sonic movie was that Sonic would have been a space criminal who was hiding on Earth with a Chaos Emerald. Sonic would have a fake hero persona to win people over before becoming an actual hero. I also read a version where Sonic was his usual heroic self, but was on the run because he was stealing emeralds to fight a galactic empire. Regardless, this version of the movie was quickly shot down by Sega. Sonic Jr. A Sonic game for little babies! After Echo Jr., there were plans for more Jr. versions of their games, one title being Sonic Jr. Info on this game is scarce. It was probably something written on the board to give the Jr. line some extra star power, but no one actually wanted to make it. But more to the point, it's unknown if this game was ever real at all. Sonic Adventure Tabletop Game Tiger just couldn't keep away from the Sonic series, could they? They made a tabletop arcade game where you played Sonic's campaign from an adventure in an LCD game. What would you rather play? This? Or this? For whatever reason, the availability of these games is elusive. I'm guessing Tiger didn't make too many of these, and the people who do have them want to keep them safe and sound. Plus, who's going to go out of their way to emulate a Tiger game? Same goes for the other games in Tiger's tabletop arcade line. Third storybook game. The Sonic Storybook duology was on the Wii, and it could have been a trilogy, but the so-so sales and reception to both titles caused that plan to be put down. A poll ran by Sega asked what fans wanted for the setting of the next game, and Greek mythology was the most popular choice. As a fan of Sonic and Kid Icarus, this could have been cool. I've actually never played either Storybook game, so I have no opinion on the subseries. Should I check them out? Man of the Year Part 2 in Sonic Jam, there was an animation of a Sonic cartoon called Man of the Year, animated by TMS Studios. Despite being made in 1994, it has elements such as a big city and humans that predate Sonic Adventure. Hell, even people mistake another character for Sonic like what happens in Sonic Adventure 2. It ends on a cliffhanger, so where's part 2? It never happened due to internal issues at Sega and TMS at the time, so Man of the Year will remain on an eternal cliffhanger. Pre-May 1993 Sonic Arcade Game the guy who names these things wasn't available. Sega's former director of marketing, Al Nelson, said that in May 1993 that lots of good stuff was coming to the Sega CD and from the Sonic series. He talked about two arcade games that weren't released because, quote, they were not the specialness that Sonic was. He said that one game was in development, and that might have been Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. Nelson also might have been talking about the cancelled Sega Sonic Bros, which was in development around that time, and did not do so well in location testing in Japan. Since this was over 30 years ago, I don't think Nelson remembers what game he saw. Sakura Wars MMO An earlier attempt from Sega to break into the Chinese market. This was being made by Sega's Chinese division for PCs. The plan was to release it in China, then expand into Japan based on how successful it was. There was an announcement at China Joy 2006, but then Sega decided to halt their expansion into China, killing the project. A leaked screen shows a character who closely resembles Yui from Shin Sakura Wars. 5th Phantom Saga Sonic Team was making a first-person shooting game. It was one of the earliest games announced for the PS3. It was shown off at E3 and TGS 2005 and vanished from memory. Shun Nakayama said that Silver's powers were inspired from another game, and more than likely he was talking about this title. March of Time Long before you could edit videos on your phone while you are fighting for your life after Korean barbecue, you had to get special hardware to edit your videos. March of Time was a planned video editing software for Sega's virtual VCR line. Based on the release game, The Colors of Modern Rock, instead of Modern Rock, you could have played around with clips from the new series, The March of Time. Hey, CD-based games had to start somewhere. This was cutting-edge technology at the time. According to Sega Retro, Another game in the virtual VCR line would have been based on Prince's art and music. Okay, he would not allow his music to be in Guitar Hero, but a video editing app for the Sega CD? Sure, why not? Cool World Sega CD I have never seen Cool World, and that is not about to change. In the Sega CD tech demo, a clip of Cool World could be seen. The Mega Play magazine had a bit more info on it, but didn't say what kind of game Cool World would have been. I guess just a normal FMV game like a lot of Sega CD games. The movie Cool World had a lot of issues behind the scenes and ended up being a box office bomb. I imagine that had a hand in Cool World never gracing the Sega CD. Miscellaneous cancelled ports and games. 
Unsurprisingly, there's a lot of games out there that got cancelled, but we don't have much info on them besides a blurb in a magazine. Since there's next to no info on these games, and it would make an already long video even longer, and it would get boring to have segments that are only a few sentences long, I'll just put them up on screen. Shouts to sites like Sega Retro and Unseen64 for being able to archive so many obscure titles. Crazy Taxi 24-7 Climax Studios was making a Crazy Taxi title in the mid-2000s, and that's it. A video uploaded by PTPO Online shows some footage. Maybe the poor sales of Crazy Taxi 3 scared Sega away from making a new game? Did they not trust Climax? Why wouldn't you trust the team behind Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue to make a Crazy Taxi game? Then again, Climax made Returnal, so I guess they are over Crazy Taxi. A Town Called Chaos, New Mexico there was going to be a second wave of 32X games, which included Bane, Ratchet & Bolt, No Relation to Ratchet & Clank or Me & Kabuki Show on a Saturday night, and a town called Chaos New Mexico. As a lifelong Albuquerquean, how could I not talk about a game that has New Mexico in the title? Imagine a game where you walk down Central, fighting the game bangers and the drug dealers. You venture into the War Zone. Yes, there is a part of Albuquerque called the War Zone. To save your old lady. Taos would be the snow level, Meow Wolf would be the crazy level. For many games, you can make tamales. You have to have boss fights in the TD Strip Club and the Isotope Stadium. Yo, this game sounds great the more I think about it. If there's any game developers watching this, talk to me, let's get the New Mexico game made. Anyway, all three games got canned because, get this, the 32X did not sell well. Info on Bane and Chaos is scarce, but a pitch video for Ratchet and Bolt is up, as well as some concept art. Ten six, the first true persistent universe on the internet. This is an MMORPG that was active in the early 2000s on PCs. Basically, Eve Online for people who like having fun with their video games. A Dreamcast port was to happen, but didn't and the game went offline in 2002. Thankfully, the game is still playable thanks to Project Visitor. Streets of Rage Online. In 2008, Bottle Rocket Entertainment pitched a Streets of Rage title to Sega, and it didn't get picked up to the surprise of no one. Marvel artist Roger Robinson posted some concept R online. Would you have rather had a Streets of Rage title look like this, or the four we got in 2020? Persona 2 Anime. Persona 2 came with a bonus disc that had some interviews and a trailer for a Persona 2 anime. This animation mystified fans for years, thinking that a Persona 2 anime would actually be coming. Well, Alice USA got lazy and missed some stuff from the Japanese bonus disc. Their disc was like watching TV and Sumaru City, and the anime trailer says that the animation will air every Wednesday, like what old anime did back then. Without the framing device of a TV broadcast, the trailer just looks like something that is in the works. So no Persona 2 anime was planned, and Alice's USA branch, perhaps unintentionally, misled fans for years. Fatless strikes again. Original Movie Tales Tails appears in the Stinger for the first Sonic movie. It isn't a spoiler! There was speculation that Tails had a design akin to Sonic's first nightmare design. People who have worked on the movie clarified that Tails never had a design like Sonic the Manhog. That hasn't stopped terrible fan art. Sonic Central. If there's one thing society needs, it's a Sonic information app. Central would have filled this need. It was supposed to be released in 2015. You could get exclusive news, see safe for work fan art, and use Sonic picture filters. Not much else is known about the project. My guess is that an information app for Sonic would be redundant in an age of social media. Imagine a Sonic-themed social media platform that would go to hell so fast. This might have evolved into Sega forever which did post lots of cool concept art, then Sega abandoned that page. Pour one out for one of my favorite Instagram pages. Sonic Human Movie One of the many concepts for the Sonic movie was for it to be a movie where a kid turns into Sonic and goes on crazy adventures. Kind of like the manga Ode to Kirihiko, but with a lot less non-consensual intercourse. I think it was the early 90s, it's hard to tell with this kind of stuff. This version of the movie was talked about in the book, Console Wars, and Sega quickly and thankfully shot down this pitch. Sonic Adventure 3 Without a doubt, the most requested game in the Sonic series is a third adventure title. We all have our Dream Adventure 3 ideas, but was a third game ever truly planned? Let's take a look. Heroes was going to be Adventure 3, but changed to not confuse newcomers to Sonic, seeing as Heroes was the first major Sonic game after Sega went third party. 
Sonic 06 has the most in common with the adventure games, with the adventure fields and multiple characters to play as, but that game had a crappy development cycle and isn't a very good game. If it was to be an Adventure 3, it certainly would have killed that dream. Sonic Unleash was called Sonic World Adventure in Japan, but that was referencing the different locales Sonic ventured to in that title. Izuka has said that an Adventure 3 isn't off the table, now that Frontiers and Superstars are out. However, it would need a large budget. I think with the success of Frontiers, as well as the movies, now it would be as good as ever for an Adventure 3. Plus, I think Frontiers has a great foundation to make a new adventure game off of. So hopefully this section will be made irrelevant in the future when we are playing Sonic Adventure 3 on the PlayStation 6 and the Super Switch. Or maybe Sega will make a sequel to Belly Hatcher and the Giant Egg, the sky's the limit. House of the Dead 5 In an interview with House of the Dead director, Takashi Oda, he had an idea for a fifth game in 2012. It didn't get off the ground due to budgetary issues and it being too ambitious. We did get a new game, Scarlet Dawn, in arcades in 2018. If you can find a machine, I highly recommend playing it, it's a blast. Some other odds and ends for the series is that 3 was going to have a cell shaded art style, and there's also a kid's version of Typing of the Dead in Japan. That isn't lost media, but the fact that there's a kid's version of Typing of the Dead is something I needed to share. Atari 2600 Paramount Games Sometime in the early 80s, Paramount and Sega were planning to release several movie-based games for the Atari 2600. These games included 48 Hours, Airplane, Dragon Slayer, Friday the 13th, Marathon Man, Star Trek In Search of Spock, The Wrath of Khan, and War of the Worlds. None of these got off the ground. The closest thing to any of these getting made was Star Trek 3 The Search of Spock, which is going to have a Laserdisc arcade game. It had a prototype made and you can see some concept art, but got axed when the quote Laserdisc bubble burst. In a circle closing moment, Paramount would make the Sonic movie decades later to much success. In a bit of trivia, Sega and Paramount were actually owned by Gulf and Western Industries in the late 60s until the 80s, so I guess that's how the Atari projects got started in the first place. Vectorman CG Movie Sega had a lot of ambition for Vectorman, didn't they? That ambition led them to being in talks for a CG Vectorman movie in the mid-90s. Ideal Entertainment was going to make the film, and it would have been something like Toy Story, but Vectorman. To the surprise of absolutely nobody, it never got made. I guess the situation wasn't ideal. Moon Dancer A manga-based game being made by Sega that sounded way ahead of its time. Announced in 1989, this game would have had RPG gameplay, relationship mechanics with your party, and time management. All of these mechanics were standard fare these days, but in 1990 this would have broken minds. Plus you could have had Palpatine, Freddie Mercury, and Sting in your party. A squad like that can fell any empire. Ambition was just too strong here, as it was cancelled because the Genesis just could not handle Moon Dancer's ideas. If a ROM exists, I would love to play it. Jet Squadron a Model 3 arcade game being made by AM3 that was going to be the third game in the Gunblade series. It appeared at AOU Amusement Expo in 2000 and vanished without a trace. Some screens were up, but weren't archived. All searches for anything for the game have gone cold. As a consolation prize, the first two Gunblade games were ported to the Wii. Far Nation Thinking that online gaming was the future, Sega wanted an MMORPG on the Dreamcast. Far Nation would have been that title. Details of the game are scarce, and to this day no gameplay, screenshots, art, or anything has been seen on the title. What little info I could find was that the game was being made by a Korean studio, it was shown off behind closed doors at E3, and those who have seen the title said it was very ambitious. Essentially, Far Nation was Sega's answer to EverQuest. It was in development early on in the system's life, but when the system was abandoned, development came to a halt. One talking point of the original Xbox was bringing Sega games to the system, but plans fell through when Microsoft wouldn't allow Dreamcast games to be played online. So Far Nation being salvaged on Xbox was out of the question. There is an image floating around showing that there is a demo disc in the wild. If someone could find and dub the ROM, that would be awesome. Puyo Puyo Theme Park And we end the iceberg with the most insane idea I have read. A Puyo Puyo Theme Park. Because some falling beans were going to be as big as Mickey Mouse or Pikachu. Compile was serious about the idea, but it never got further than sketches. Compile relied too much on Puyo Puyo to prop them up when literally everything else they made failed. This led Compile into financial issues in the late 90s, and pursuing the theme park idea was something that they could not afford. By the time the Puyo Puyo box came around, Compile either couldn't get a new game out, or they knew that they were screwed regardless. When Sega got full ownership of Puyo, they definitely put the theme park idea down for good. I'll just stick with my vodka-infused Puyo Puyo gummies.
And with that, the Sega and Sonic Lost Media video is finished, and I hope you enjoyed it. Whenever you make a Lost Media video, the most important thing about it is just to spread awareness on the topic. You never know who's going to be watching and be like, oh yeah, I know someone who worked on that project, or oh yeah, I worked on that project, and here's some concept art. Like, things I've talked about in previous videos have been found, and I'm not sure if I contributed to that, but uh, I like to believe so. Plus, I would hate it if I worked on a video game or a project just for it to get cancelled and just for it to be forever lost to time. At least now we can remember what happened in history, and uh, I think that's a I think that's a good thing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I keep on saying like, oh, this is gonna be my last Lost Media Icebreak video, but uh, people keep watching them, and I keep making them, so you never know what's gonna happen in the future. So here's the question: If there's any Lost Media you want to find, anything at all, let me know down there in the comments. And while you're down there, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell as well for notifications on future videos. I am active on the social media: Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at Zmings. And with that, we'll see you in the next video. Later everybody, take care.